Welcome to the Padlet recap for the week 10 Padlet. So, first of all, thank you to everyone who asked the questions and have been using the Padlets. I do appreciate them. They are a great feedback loop for me. Uh, and they help us because it, it's another way to get information. It's another way to help co-create the course. So the easiest question uh, to address was the last question in, actually. That's the power play due date. I currently have the power play set to go on the 8th of November, midnight. I am giving consideration to running that as an earlier submission. The rationale being that once I get the stuff marked, once I get the uh, EPRs marked, that the quicker I can give you the opportunity to turn around your EP, uh, second submission or submit your power play, the quicker I can have that done and it's potentially then available for you to know what your scorecard is looking at coming into the final round, coming into the portfolio. I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself to mark stuff really quickly and I think it will work and I think I'll get there. Uh, but I also have that buffer zone in place of if I do something dumb, uh, get myself injured or just, you know, reality happens and I can't get the marking done as fast as I like, it's still set currently for the 8th. So I will make a formal announcement about that once I've seen how well I get through the uh, performance review marking. Second set of questions. Uh, now, I've had several goes at recording this video. I'm going to flag that out right because A, I can talk for hours about this and B, I want to get this right. So I'm going to mention the... Essentially the question boils down to the three... There are three different questions and each of them asking is if you're not engaged in one of the channels, will you lose marks? And the answer is no. Short answer is no, you won't lose marks. Long answer is, you don't start with 20 points and get it whittled away. You start with zero points, and then you have a semester worth of performance. Then at the end of it, you come back to me and say, well, this is what I did well. Or I look at it and go, well, that's what you did well. Those are the channels you, uh, you went with and you chose. The whole premise of the e-marketing subject is that there are multiple pathways and there are many paths. The sheer existence of the shadow hawker pathway, the self-service, no seminar, no tutorial mode, says that you don't lose points for not being in the seminar and you don't lose points for not being in the forum, uh, not being in the tutorials. But also, you don't lose points for not being in the forum. What it, this assessment task is designed to do three things for me. Number one, it's a simulation. It is a simulation task to get people to try out different aspects of social media management, social media behavior. Number two is it creates a pathway for me to give grades out to people who may not necessarily be able to access one or more of the option sets. Now, I already run two seminars. I run a daytime and a nighttime seminar so I could increase the number of ways people could access. With those timetable clashing and not being available to some people, I opened the third channel, the Shadow Hawkers, the full self-service mode, and said, look, you can't make those two events, go do the forums and the Padlets. I turned around and said, look, if you forum, you hate the forum, absolutely, well, there's the Padlet, there's the seminar, there's the tutorial, there's the DLC, well, okay, DLC is not so great if you don't like the forum. Uh, but you can find out from someone else there's DLC. If you think, oh, look, Padlet's bloody stupid, I'm not doing that, then fine. That's it. That's the whole point. The point was of this exercise is for you to sit in our simulation game and to come out the far end of it and go, well, I really like that. I really like threaded text conversations. That So yeah, oh, the forum was good fun. I like that. You might possibly find yourself enjoying 
Facebook chats and Facebook conversations and Twitter. If you came out the far end of this and go, oh, that DLC stuff, oh, oh hey, that is awesome. You might be all about events and big tickets and creativity. And you might find Instagram, because it's much more visual stuff. Or TikTok might be uh, like, oh, that was awesome. If you find you come out the far end and go, hey, seminars, they were awesome. I love that. I got to talk to people and then I got to present those people's opinions. You might be an opinion leader and YouTube celebrity endorsement and Instagram influence might be your thing coming up. It might be more about into the camera. If you always hated putting the camera on but loved talking, podcasts. But that's the point. The whole point of this show, the whole idea of the 20 marks here is I wanted to give you a reason to be part of the marketing community. And that, to me, is the thing I think you should go back and look at. Ultimately, in this, the rubric that was published at the start of semester, the Super HD doesn't mention any of the pathways, doesn't mention what mechanism you use, what it says, and it does say across several areas of performance, so there is that little thing, I know it could get some people nervous, but the idea is that I want you to play with more than just the one option. Engagement can take many forms, and yours has been multifaceted, across in leadership and followership. You were there in support of your peers, and you led the way, in creation and curation. Plus, you actively help build the community of MKTG2032. If you want the 100%, the 20 out of 20, the super high distinction, you will have done it by being here and part of this. And you'll know. You'll have been a contributor. You will have walked out at the end of the day and gone, yeah, yeah, I was part of that. So that's, that's what the Super HDs are about. It's about the community. It's about, that's why we've got Nominator Mate. That's why we've got the reflective task of how do I feel I contributed. Because this task is about giving you a chance to run through the simulation and to resolve a bunch of things, like to deal with the fear of missing out, to choose. I won't, I will choose not to use a path. I will choose not to go onto the Padlets getting to the end and going, I made that decision, I will stay with that decision. And it's not a consequences to be damned of, I have purchased those consequences, they are mine. There are many consequences, these are mine. And to be comfortable with that, to be deliberate and intentional in your actions and comfortable with your decisions, that's part of the add-on pack. So this subject does more than just teach you about how to do things on the internet. It runs a bunch of psychological trainings. It does a bunch of work integrated learning. It does a bunch of life integrated learning. And the participation engagement score is part of the life integrated learning of giving you a chance to make decisions, to choose your path, because none of those pathways were compulsory. They were all a case of, I want to try this, I want to use this, I will stay with this. Because I respect you as your choice you want to do it this way? Cool. We'll see what we can do to support you. But if you get to the end of the semester and you look back and go, no, I don't feel I put the yards in, then that's also part of this. It's to understand that, yeah, there were opportunities that if you chose not to take them, you look back in hindsight and go, geez, I wish I'd done that. Then you know next time to do it. So that's what this is about. That's why the rubrics are open-ended. That's why you didn't get a score out of 20 in the review you got given, these are the things that we recognize you have accessed. And that question then became for you of, are you satisfied that you have accessed the things you wanted to access? And I think that's gonna be the question that is probably the hardest for everyone at the end of the subject, is to look back and go, did I cash in what I wanted to? When I chose did I choose or did I let the choice happen? Because if you let the choice happen, look, you got to deal with that your own terms, your own times. But if you chose and you made it intentional, good on you. I'm proud of you. And I think that was the right way to go. What I'd like to see is in that final week 12 reflection exercise, the little 
quiz we're going to ask you to look back. I'd like to see you put yourself forward and say, hey, these are the areas I intentionally used. I want to be assessed on that. So hopefully that helps bring some confidence, make some chaos and confusion. I will say here and now that if you didn't enjoy the forum, uh, because there was too much traffic and too much stuff happening, you probably don't want a career as a social media manager. But that's really useful as well. I'm, I'm proud of you for making that decision. Because you also had to find that out. You didn't know that at the outset. You found that out. You learned that. You learned that about yourself. Same way is if you find that this participation, that it's too open-ended. If you find that you really... God's sake, Stephen, just tell me what I need to bloody do. Well, you know that about yourself now. And I'm proud of you for that. And I think that's really important that you understand that, look, you, this isn't the environment that suits you. you. You want structure. You want more task orientation. So look for that. Build towards that. You're, like, you're really good under uh, certain types of management. You might then decide that, hey, yeah, look, I thought I was pretty good with chaos and uncertainty. I re went in the Stevens course and, jeez, that was chaos and uncertainty. It wasn't, wasn't what I wanted. Well, you know more stuff about yourself now. And that's really great. I'm really pleased. So if you have come at this as well, the other side, you've gone, oh, my God, that was awesome. Because it was on fire, burning down, exploding, and sinking into the swamp at once. And it's like, I have not had so much fun in ages. That, too, is awesome. Because the whole point of this task is you're part of a community. You're contributing to a community. And if you've done well, then what you've done is you've built something around you that supports everyone else and gives them a chance to do well. And they have supported you and given you a chance to do well. So it's a collective, it's a collaborative, and it's a community. And if you want to be the Super HD, if you wanted the 20 from 20, uh, simply comes down to it is that if I was to remove you from the subject, the subject would be different, then you have attained that top tier, that top rank. You made a difference. And equally, for that difference to have been made by somebody, they needed an audience. They needed the people who they were leading. They needed followers. They needed people who listened. They needed people who watched. They needed people who, in the discussion rooms, gave them ideas but also heard them out. Who, in the seminars, were in the audience and got to hear them speak. In the tutorials, were there to witness what they were doing. Who read the posts on the Padlet? Who read the posts in the forums? The 1990 rule applies. 1% creates, 9% edits. 90% are the most valuable asset on the planet because you're the audience and we need you. And I can say that honestly because I can create these things. I can 1% this. But if I don't have my 90% out there listening, watching, don't make an impact. So don't just remember participation and engagement. It's not it's not attendance, it's the extent to which you were part of this. And if you see yourself as part of this, and others see you as part of this, right, you're part of it. So that's what you're looking for. And with that, see you in the seminars, forums, padlets, downloadable contents, or any other channel that sees uh, that you feel fits the engagement bill.